Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed. In this video, we've got another couple of Retivest radios sent in for review. And these are the RB639s. These radios are on the lower end of the price bracket on Retivest radios, currently at $31.99, which with the weak pound against the dollar comes out at £28 or £14 per radio. So let's crack into it. Let's see what we get in the box. Now, as always with these Retivest products, we get a rather nice printed manual. I do like a printed manual myself. I know a lot of manufacturers are just moving away for costs reasons, but everything is laid out in the manual here telling you what all the buttons do, all the functions of the radio specifications. And it's also quite nice that I noticed that they also give you the preset frequencies and channels that's in the radio. Again, if you're going to reprogram the radio at any stage and you, you lose track, they're all written in there so you can put them back in. Do you like that? That's a nice touch. Radios themselves, um, very similar to the RT622s. In fact, I've got one just over here that I reviewed the other week, actually. When you look at them side by side, very, very much similar dimensions. Uh, these 639s, they're slightly bigger. You've got a slightly longer antenna. Very, very thin. Again, just 17 millimetres from the width there. Let me just put the belt clip on. Just a plastic belt clip again. It's not got a metal hinge to it, which is a bit of a shame, really. Uh, that clicks on. And, oh, I quite like that. You've got like a little hook there. Can you see that? So that would fit a bit on a mic, a mic hook or something. So that's quite nice. But uh, yeah, n not hinged. Just um, just the stress of the plastic there would have been nice. To perhaps you've got that hinge, but yeah, seems to work quite well that system. So this six three nine model, what do you get for your extra two pound fifty compared to the che cheaper six two two? Well, there's a lot more functionality. You you do need to go into the programming software if you want to access every feature of the radio and change the parameters the frequencies but there's a lot more you can do with just the buttons on the radio and i'll demonstrate that in a moment still half a watt radio so it's standard uk legal power however i did check on the website and it has got a higher power setting which can be switched up to two watts which is what you get over in America. I did check the free download software and that option is unfortunately not active for EU and the UK. That, otherwise it would be probably illegal to sell it. You can use third-party software for these radios. I always use Chirp. It's a free downloadable software. I did check the Chirp list on the Retivest radios. Um, it does grow every time they do an update. Sadly at the moment this radio is not currently featured on their uh, compatibility list. Uh, once it does become featured, you will be able to turn the power up to 2 watts, I should imagine, and that will increase the range. If you do want to use software, you will have to buy an additional programming cable. These are typically anything from about 5 to £7 pounds on the Retivest website. Other than the little belt clip we've already talked about, all that's supplied in the box is a dual, a Y-shaped dual USB-C charging cable. You don't get the power adapter, but of course everyone's got those anyway for your mobile phones. Quick look around the radio. Once again, it's a £14 radio, but it actually feels really nice. There's no creaks or groans if you put a bit of pressure on it. Fixed antenna is absolutely fine. Absolutely, uh, yeah, nice. No replaceable battery again I, I do like the radios that have got the little nokia battery where you can carry replacements this one is built in bit of a shame bit of a shame really it does look like it has a um, available docking station again if you were sort of buying this for a business moving on to this side we have the usb charging port there usb c for the supplied cable and then we've got the kenwood two pin plug now, straight away, I've got to say, and this might just be me, but 
On the cheaper 622, I, I did like the fact that it has a separate on off and volume control. I just find that easier to use on a PMR radio. This one, yeah, it's missing that unfortunately. We have got a rubberized single press button. So let's switch that on and see how we adjust the volume. Okay, so you get the status there of the channel and the battery. So to adjust the volume on, on this radio, you just have to simply press down the on-off button once. Volume four. And then again. Volume five. Volume three. It goes to through to five different levels of volume. I, I just think it would have been easier with a simple analog on-off so switch. So moving over to this side. A rubberized, slightly rubberized push TT button, nice and big, no problem. Then we have a menu button. This is where it varies from the uh, the cheaper 622. So some of the functions that you would normally do on programming software are available by pressing this button. So we just have a little um, look at those. Vox. Right, Vox. So this is a voice activated feature, and we can switch that on via the up and down button. So that Vox system should now be active. So when I talk, we should be transmitting. Let's um, let me be, let me shut up and let's listen. Audio one two one two one two audio. And there you go. As you, oh yeah, it's still transmitting. So there you can see now every time that I talk, the radio is transmitting. Can be quite useful. Can be also very annoying as well. Let me switch that off. There we go, so we switch the Vox function off. Let's see what else we can do with the built-in menus. Call tone. I don't know what that means, no idea. Roger B. On. Off. Okay, so we can switch the Roger Bleep on and off, that's quite useful. Key beep. Key beep. I think that's key bleep if you wanted that annoying key bleep on and off. Again, that's quite useful. Oh, and then we're back. Then we're back to Vox. Also, the menu button is multifunction. If we hold it down, it will open the squelch, and we can monitor the channel. Monitor on. Monitor off. Now, what I like about that is that you can release the button and it remains open. So if you were listening to distant stations, distant signals, you would be able to leave that open. That's that's quite a good feature. Right, moving down again, if we hold down the plus button, the radio should enter a scan mode and the light should flash. Let's see if that works. Scan on. There we go. So the radio now is scanning the 16 pre-programmed channels. And then to switch the scan feature off, we simply hold that button down again for three seconds. Scan off. Again, okay, that's quite good. So mostly on other radios, you have to go into the programming software to activate that. And then finally, the same as the 622, but I'm, I'm actually prepared for it. If you hold down the minus button, it will switch on a personal alarm. So let's give that a go. Stand by, hold your ears. Okay, and there you go. So it's got that function if it's useful to you. Now these radios have another good feature, which is quite unique. It's not it's not on all Retivest radios, but they have a clone function. So this means that, for example, if you wanted to set the parameters on one radio, get it exactly what you want, so whatever channels you want, Vox features, squelch level, you can then hold down a couple of buttons. I think it's the menu button and the plus button, and then this radio will copy, it will clone all of the same features, all of the same functions onto the second radio. Right, gonna do some testing now. Now, I've explained this before, I've done a lot of PMR radio testing. If you're very lucky enough to live in a nice open area, say a farm out in the fields, something like that, two of these radios, UK power, half a watt, you should get about a kilometre between the two radios, perhaps further if the conditions are favourable, one radio's higher than the other one, things like that. Now. 
unfortunately I live in a modern suburban built up housing estate lots of infrastructure lots of houses all crammed together lamp posts cars you name it I've got it I find that the maximum range that I can get out of a legal half watt radio is about half a kilometer 500 meters sometimes half a mile if conditions are absolutely perfect so these are short range communication devices okay so here we are at my regular spot so I'm about 350 meters from the receiving radio I've put a couple of rows of houses between me and the radio so it's just typical if you was a yard marshal or something in a car park and you needed to communicate back to base there I'll transmit back and see what it sounds like yeah audio test one two three four one two three four. audio test one two three four one two three four about three fifty meters from the qth audio test one two one two three four so nothing wrong with that uh, transmit test. Very nice, clear audio. No crackles, no whistles over the transmission. Yeah, pretty good. So conclusions, what do I think of the radio? Well, overall, I think it's a pretty decent radio for 14 UK pounds. It's well made. It does the job. It's very nice and slim. If you took the clip off, you could slip that into your pocket no problems and uh, yeah i do like the fact though that the buttons you can access some of the um, menu features without having to resort to programming it in software i think that's a step forward there and also the cloning feature as well when you can clone between the radios that can save you an awful lot of time so I will leave buying links in the description. I'd just like to say at this stage, this is a freebie. They send me these radios to test. I try and be as honest as I can in the review, but I'm not on any commission kickback. If you buy a radio, I don't get any kickback or anything like that. So it's just a straightforward review. So I'll leave a link in the description. Um, Retivest have been sending me the um, Euro link for the UK, and you may have to go on to the website, and um, you might have to search the radio out. That shouldn't really be a problem, just put in RB639. I'll see if I can get a direct link. I think that's a little bit easier, but that's just the way they're doing things at the moment. So I think that's about it. As always, thank you for your view time. A very small channel. I get so little views. I do appreciate everyone that comes on and watches my videos. So there's the thumb from Fred in the Shed. Please give that back to me down below. I'd appreciate that in return. And as always, please, please, please stay safe. Look after yourselves. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.